Hello, everyone. I'm Irma Baker. Welcome to our show. Oh, it's so great to have our very special guest. And that is Robert Fan from Social Security. You know, he comes every year. Robert, I'm just so thrilled that you can do this every year for us to bring us up to date on what's happening with Social Security. Yes, and ma'am. especially at this time when we're in the middle of a pandemic and oh my gosh, we have so many stresses with everything that's going on around us and all that we have to deal with. But it's wonderful to be able to have someone like Robert come in and just clear up some things for us and help us to, in this aspect of our lives, get a little direction there. So Robert, oh, thank you so much for being with us today. Well, thank you, Irma. Yeah. Good to see you again. Yeah. I guess yeah. I can say be seen again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are seeing each other, even though we're not uh, in the studio across from each other like, we, like we've been for so many years. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, so, uh, but, uh, it is wonderful to have you with us. And I do uh, appreciate you taking your time today. And I have to tell you, I love the background. You like? <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big techie person. Uh-huh. So uh, I don't know how you did this, but <laughs> whatever, whatever you did, this is a yeah. great background. And I see that uh, looking down at the bottom of the screen there, it looks like you brought an audience along. I did. Uh, Joanna may be in the, in the crowd somewhere there. <laughs> You know, from our our, our 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 studio friends, WCTV. You know, but yeah, and I appreciate it. Thank you. It's just my opportunity to give a Vanna White uh, impression there for, to promote SocialSecurity.gov. Um, so thank you. It's just uh, again uh, with all of this technology and what have you. I mean, just think a couple of years ago, I wouldn't have thought anything about the word Zoom other than needing to go from place to place very fast. <laughs> that would be it. You know, but. Hey, here we are. So again, thank you for this opportunity. It's great to uh, be back um, in front of the listeners. Well, thank you. And let's get right into it. Mm -hmm. Tell us what's new. Give us the updates for Social Security. Yes. Um, as you said, I like to make sure that everyone um, each year knows what's coming, um, what's to be expected in terms of uh, the 2021 updates. Now, I'm true enough, I'm not Santa Claus, so I'm not bearing all these gifts each year but I am bearing the information um, that many of the listening uh, and the viewers will be able to uh, uh, make sound decisions in terms of social security. So some of those updates, and when I say updates, I'm referring to the fact that in 2021, um, there is a 1.3% cost of living adjustment. We also call it a COLA. Now that cost of living adjustment, once it takes place, it also affects other things. Some of those things that it does affect is for example, if someone is, starting their job, you know, their, the years of working, or if they are currently working and they're wanting to know, how do I become eligible for Social Security retirement benefits and disability benefits and Medicare, all right? Well, there's a dollar amount that we call credits. That dollar amount ha uh, to earn that credit has changed in 2021. This year, that dollar amount is $1,470 gross. So if someone is working, this year in 2021, they need to at least make $1,470 gross to get that one credit. Every year they can get as many as four of those credits. So four times $1,470 would be $5,880. I just did some quick math right there. I'm not really a genius or I think I got it written down. But anyway, so if an individual uh, makes at least, I'm just gonna round up and say $6,000, they have earned their four credits for the year. That's very important, Irma, because um, I've come across individuals who have maybe uh, less than the amount needed to be what we call it insured, meaning you need to have 40 of those credits to be insured. So four in the 40 is 10. Someone needs to have worked at least 10 years in their life to get those 40 credits. So what if they're only at 36? So they need to know that this year they need to make those other four. So that way then they are insured to receive a Social Security retirement or disability or a Medicare insurance coverage. Uh, another thing that has been updated in 2021, um, the people ask questions, they, we get these questions after our show is, well, can I work and still receive a social security payment? And then some people think the answer is no, but the answer actually is yes. 
you can work, excuse me, and still receive a social security retirement payment. The thing is, is that we must understand this. It's, it's interesting how we all have our own definitions. We think that the word means the same for everyone, it doesn't. So when I say retirement, my mindset thinks the individual has already worked and they no longer want to go back to work, right? They don't want to see those people again. They're like, okay, I paid my dues. I want to retire. Well, some people define retirement as I was working full time. Now I'm working part time. So they would like to know, can I still work this part time job? Or maybe even is that their full time wage? And they would like to know, but can they still do it and still receive a social security payment? The answer is yes. Now, how much this year in 2021, a person needs to make or can make $18,960, $18,960 before it has any effect on them. And that's for individuals who are less than their full retirement age. Full retirement age means when I reach a certain age, when can I receive 100% of what I'm eligible for? So individuals who are born between 1943 to 54, their full retirement age is 66. Anyone born after 1954, the full retirement age goes up. So then it's 1955, 66 in two months, 1956, 66 in four months. They keep adding two months all to those born in 1960 or later. So if you're born 1960 or later, your full retirement age is 67. So what I'm referring to is how much I can work before that full retirement age. Once you hit your full retirement age, this year in 2021, you're, you can make $50,520. $50,520, and that is for the full year. Um, now, if you are turning your full retirement age the same year, Social Security is going to be only concerned with the month before you actually reach that full retirement age. So if my full retirement age was in June, Social Security is saying I can make $50,000 between January and May, the month before. Um, another thing, and I'll, I'll give this uh, other update, Medicare, because people say all the time to me, well, if, there, if I'm going to get a cost of living increase and my checks are going to go up there, I know Medicare is going to go up, right? You know, they, they, I just know it's going to happen. All right. Well, if I were a betting man, I would see those odds there. I would understand it. So they are correct that Medicare, the cost of Medicare last year was $144.60. This year it's $148.40. So it's a little bit, I'm just going to say $4 of an increase for an individual for their Medicare. So these are some Robert, big can things. I, can I ask you a question there? Please do, please do. When you uh, said that uh, amount for Medicare, mm -hmm. where do people see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what happens is when we find out there's a cost of living increase, which when I say we, Social Security's administration, we get information from the U.S. Treasury Department. All right, and say so they do all the, the, the fact finding from the Consumer Price Index, um, so they, they get that information, they send it to the Treasury Department, they send it to us. We receive this information normally around in October, sometimes late in November. So when we receive it, we send a notification out to all the Social Security beneficiaries. And so that's around the end of December, they will get a letter from Social Security saying how much you will start receiving the next year. So in 2020, we, re we start sending those notices out for 2021. And then in that notice, it will say, this cost of living 1.3% has this result on your social security payment. Your new amount will be this, whatever it may be. And it'll show what the Medicare, the new Medicare amount will be this amount. So they'll see it there, all right? So, and then they also can, which we are talk about momentarily here, through their My Social Security portal, through their own social security accounts, they can have access right at their fingertips. So great question. And that's going to be the deduction then from the gross um, Social Security. Yes. Excellent point, too, Irma. Excellent point, because um, I found time and time again, individuals, they hear in, you know, whether it's on social media, the news, newspaper, radio, whatever way, they hear what the cost of living increase is going to be. And they add 1.3 percent to their net deposits that they're getting in their financial institution. So they look at their bank account and they say, okay, I'm going to add 1.3% to this. And then when they receive the letter, the fold out that you were mentioning, it may be off a dollar or two because Social Security, we add the 1.3% to the gross, just like you said, Irma. And then if they took their Social Security benefits before 
they were 66 or, or whatever the full retirement age is, we have to then make an uh, account for that what we call a reduction factor. Then we reduce the benefits for that. And then their social security check will have that amount for them. But that's why if you're adding your 1.3% to the net versus to the gross, you may be off a little bit. So I say, wait till we mail you out that actual letter notification, then you'll have the actual number. Well, a little while ago, you mentioned something called my account. Yes. Well, talk a little bit about that. Yes, the my social security account. Um, prior years, prior, when I say prior to um, 2014 or so, social security would mail out a social security statement. And in that statement, and uh, it brought just joy and happiness to the world because everybody was waiting for that for their birthday. And it would come three months before your birthday. All right. And then that social security statement was no longer mailed out. Then it start, it was sent out in increments of every five years once you turn age 25. Then that was changed to what we have currently. At the age of 60, any individual um, can still receive their social security statement that will be mailed to them unless it's an individual has a My Social Security account. Because many individuals would like to know, well, what is it that uh, Social Security has recorded for my earnings? Now, keep in mind, this information, the, your past years that you've worked, has been recorded through IRS. That's what we call the FICA tax, uh, Federal Insurance Contribution Act. When our individual works, IRS receives information, we receive that, and then we place it onto that My Social Security statement. Um, so what you can do now, if you're less than age 60, you can, or at any age, you can activate a My Social Security account. You go to our website, and then you can see the word My in red lettering. Click on the word My, and it will, will open up a lot of information that's only um, for you, personal. It's your own personal account, and it will pull up, Irma, it'll pull up um, your, your, the years that you pay into Social Security, what if you become disabled? What if you file for retirement benefits? What if you're age 62, 66, age 70? I'll pull that information up. If you're receiving a social security payment now, it will let you know, um, you know how much you're receiving, when you're receiving it. Um, it will also allow you to maybe, if you wish to make a change, your address or phone number, uh, bank account information, your Medicare information. You know, if you need to prove that you're receiving Medicare, that information is there through the My Social Security portal. Now, I just want to make sure for the sake of time, I do say this um, so everyone knows that I myself, I do not receive Social Security benefits. You know, don't, don't, don't let this, uh, the grayness fool you up here. Yeah. But I don't receive Social Security benefits, but I still wanted a My Social Security account. Why? Because I wanted to protect myself. And I'm encouraging individuals to also do that as well. When, by opening a My Social Security account, it lessens those opportunities, which we've heard of things called identity theft. So not only did I want to know what was in my record, all the years that, you know, my first job, I want to make sure that's recorded to present, but I also wanted to use another extra layer of safety in terms of my social security records. You know, that brings up a good point because with all that information out there, I'm sure that there are people thinking right now, well, gee, just like you mentioned, the scams and the identity yeah. theft. Can we talk a little bit about scam awareness? Yes, yes, yes. It's so important, Irma. Thank you for asking that uh, question. Um, I will say this. Just uh, today, it's probably been a week now, I was so elated to have another one of those scam phone calls. And I, I just thought about it. I said, what in the world is this? I'm the Social Security guy, you know, one of them, you know, and I'm still getting these phone calls. And it was a robotic voice, um, someone telling me that I need to contact them in the next, whatever, 24 hours, or they're going to freeze the social security account. Or, and in one of the phone calls, I was threatening saying that, hey, if you don't do this, you're going to jail. Whoa, you're going to, I'm going to go to jail? I'm like, wait a minute. So now we're getting uh, subpoenas by phone, you know, and then not, you know, not a sheriff showing up to your door or anything like that, but they're just going to threaten you over the, all of this is a scam. It is unfortunate, and I'm grateful that our commissioner has, has put forward information. People can go to our website, socialcreditor.gov, and read there's a blog. Um, and there's information about, if you look at the top of our uh, website, socialcreditor.gov, you will see information about the COVID pandemic, where we keep our updates. Uh, and then you also see information you need to report about scams. Um, again, 
Social Security will only contact you is if you have told us you wanted to speak to us. You made an appointment, right? Or you called us and said, can someone let me know or help me understand something? You know, you have made contact, right? That would make sense. Social Security, if we do need to contact you, that's quote unquote out of the blue, we're gonna mail you a letter first. We're gonna notify you that we want to talk to you and we may give you a date as well. Regardless of whether you called us or we mailed you a letter, Social Security is never ever going to threaten you with some type of uh, a means of saying, if you don't do this, we're gonna just close you, you know, it frees your social security number, which is something that can be done by us, you know, anyway. Um, or if they're trying to tell you, we want you to put money on a gift card, go to another location. And so that way money can be onto this card. That's not how social security operates at all. So in simple, uh, simple words, just hang up. Someone contacts you and you feel as though it's not social security, you should hang up. If we do contact you, we will give you our name and our phone number for you to call us. Um, with that being said, I'm going to segue just a little bit on this point that if someone's trying to reach Social Security uh, during this pandemic, um, we understand um, that there's a lot of individuals who may not have access to the computer, right? And they may uh, want to know, well, how do I at least call Social Security? How do I get in contact? I'm going to provide the Medina uh, local so Social Security office number so you can have that. Um, that number for Medina's office, being that in Wadsworth, that's the closest one there um, to most individuals, is 866-613-2774. I repeat, 866-613-2774. Uh, that is to the location there in Medina. Now, any individual can go to any Social Security office. You can go to our website, socialsecurity.gov, look at the bottom of our website, click Office Locator, you can click that, you know, or contact us. It says contact us, click contact, scroll down to the bottom of the screen and it'll says office locator. You click that and you type in your zip code and it'll tell you where the nearest social security office is. Uh, you mentioned uh, a minute or two ago that uh, if social security needed to contact you, they would definitely not phone out of the blue. They mm -hmm. would send you a letter. Is it possible then to go to socialsecurity.gov and confirm that it was actually Social Security that sent you that letter? What a person could do, they can call 1-800-772-1213. I repeat, 1-800-772-1213. That is our national number. Uh, that number, um, someone can call that number and then they can say, I received a letter or a phone call from such and such office and this phone number. All of our names as employees are listed in the, the I'll call, I'll use the word database. They can pull that name up and they can refer it. And they can also, as you said, Irma, they can look at the letter that was sent. All right, in most cases, they can send that and they can see that letter. Now, are there any opportunities where the letter, we have a national database and then maybe the local office, maybe they just sent something um, because it was something simple. Maybe we got some return mail and we just need to make sure, okay, um, is, are, are you uh, responding to our letters? What's going on? We may have to then make a phone call and find another way to mail you a letter. If that happens, um, you can just call the local office, which is the number on uh, the way that I gave it to you by going to our website, looking at office locator or contact us, then office locator, put in the zip code, and then you can call that local number. And that local number, they will say, yes, there is a Robert Finn who works here. And so that, so either you can call that 800-772-1213 number or the number, in this case, if for Medina, you'll use that 866 number I just provided. Both of those numbers will allow you to speak to someone to verify that someone is contacting you from Social Security. That I think is very important information because we get so many scam letters as well. Because in most times though if we're mailing you a letter mm -hmm. I'm going to have my name and phone number on it so mm -hmm. my point is what you're going to do is when you call it we are accustomed to knowing well thank you for calling the Social Security Administration located on such and such road you will know that it's legit the scam the difference is the scam will call and even if it's on your caller ID it may have a hundred number but then it will redirect you to a different number 
Uh -huh. See? Ours will have you come right to us, and then you will call that number that I um, gave you, and then it'll say, can I speak to our Mr. Finn? Okay, yes, Mr. Finn works here. But in the cases that I'm mentioning, when we mail a letter, it's going to have my direct extension. And you'll know, press one for an English, press two for this. Thank you for calling the Social Security office. You'll, you'll know that it's from us. Are there any anything else that you want to tell us about updates or uh, scam awareness? Uh, uh, well, another update I want to make sure um, that everyone is aware of that right now, um, two things, in terms of insurance. Insurance is so important to us, right? You know, making sure they're recovered and make sure that we feel comfortable visiting our doctors and physicians and the like to make sure that we're getting the care that we all um, so need. Now, um, you can, at this time, if you were no longer working, unfortunately, during the pandemic, there are individuals who are no longer employed, they've lost, you know, the, the job is closed or whatever it may be, and you are um, eligible for Medicare, you can now go to our website, socialcurity.gov, you will see Medicare, you can either just type in the search option at the top or on the right side, it says menu, click on menu, then you'll see Medicare. It will lead you to at the bottom of that Medicare uh, site, at the bottom of it, you can apply for your Medicare benefits, meaning that if you were covered by a group health plan. So let's say you were 65 years old, you were working and you did not take your um, Medicare Part B because there's different parts of Medicare, which we can have a different presentation on about that. But if you're over 65, you had not filed for your Medicare benefits, um, um, or you just took your A and did not take B, there's a template there, which you will fill out a form, we call it a 40B and an L-564, two forms. You just simply type in the PDF and then you can fax it in to your local office. That same way I said, look at your office locator and then how to contact us, typing in our zip code, it will give you a fax number. So now instead of you having to get the paperwork, go back to the employer who may not be open, right? And due to COVID, there may be different restrictions. Now you can take that form from, print it out from your, at your own, own convenience at home and just fax it in to the office. So it saves you that step instead of putting you into a maybe harm's way in terms of interacting with other individuals um, to keep that safe distance. Yes, Irma. Uh, I just got a little question there. Not everybody has fax capability at home. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so the individual still can print it out. Um, they still can mail it to us, to the local office. Um, and just so I wanna make sure I say this, so people understand it. And when someone mails something to us now at during this time, the pandemic, um, that we will receive something, but COVID practices, we will have to let it sit for at least 24 hours. Um, so if you mailed something on Monday, it's possible we got it Tuesday or Wednesday, but then if we receive it on that Wednesday, we let it sit for Thursday, open back up on Friday, and then we will respond. You know, you'll get that response maybe that next Monday. So just so you understand that there's that day or so lag in between there. Uh, so that's one thing that I wanna make sure individuals know that yes, you can go to our website, print out a template so you can still enroll to your Medicare uh, benefits. Also relating to Medicare, people have um, the needs for coverage for their prescriptions. So um, this is a, again, important time. If a person meets the income and resource requirements, they may, um, be able to apply for extra help, right? Extra help, they can go to our website and I have these numbers here. If they're a single individual, they can, if their income is underneath $14,790 or as a couple, uh, $29,520 per year, that individual could apply for extra help. Now, here's the thing. I wanna make sure I stress this for everyone, Irma, is that just because your income is over those amounts that I'm giving you, and I repeat those numbers, $14,790 for an individual or $29,520 um, as a couple, even if your income is over that, I'm encouraging individuals you still can apply because they may say, well, because of the extra help, maybe they can pay for your co-pays or maybe they can't pay for co-pays, but they can help you pay with your deductibles. Maybe they can't pay for their deductibles, but maybe they can help with your premiums. So there's different things that can assist you um, that's by applying for extra help. This is one of the uh, things that Social Security is make sure we offer again to um, the word that we use that you've, you've heard before is vulnerable populations. It's helping individuals at this time where they may be homeless um, or, or, or they're just, you know, um, their income and resources are a little low. 
Um, and then that's another option for you. So I'm just encouraging individuals. Um, and again, as you said, Irma, not everybody has access to the internet, uh, but many times their loved ones and friends, they do. And so you, I encourage them to have this as another resource and a tool. And then I push back just a little bit, Irma, just a little, little tint, because it's interesting to me that I think, again, when you're talking about how we define things differently, people say, I don't have a computer. And then I say, well, what is this? You know, and then they go, that's my cell phone. I'm like, oh, what are you looking at? Oh, I'm on Facebook. You are. Well, do you know that that is a computer? We just use it as a phone. Like, oh, so you, we, we have to kind of redefine what a computer is. It doesn't have to be something that you set up in a corner that eventually you put your coffee mug on, right? It is actually a, a handheld device now. So not everyone has that access. Sometimes it's, it's uh, issues of, you know, you only have so many minutes on it. So we understand those things. But Social Security just wants to make sure you know that you can access um, Social Security by calling those phone numbers I mentioned. You can access through the internet website or you can mail something in. When people do write to you, I think this is very important too. What should they include in the letter? Oh, great. Thank you. Um, we do encourage individuals, uh, they, they can write whatever their uh, paragraph or information they want to place into it. Um, but we at least need your name and phone number. So then we can call and contact you to see what is needed. All right. Now, when we do contact you, keep this in mind, I'm paralleling, you know, from what we talked about earlier. Is since you contacted us, the only way we can look into our system is to receive your social security number. So we are going to need it because you contacted us and we didn't have anything. And sometimes people think just by calling us and saying their name, they think that our system picks up their name. And now all of a sudden we have all this information in front of us. It doesn't work that way. Um, we're, we're not that advanced. You know, George Jetson is not flying past our building, you know, so there's no none of that. All right. So we still need you to talk to us and provide your information. And then we can assist you for whatever you wrote in that to that letter. Okay. So if they call Social Security directly, mm -hmm. they know it's OK to give their Social Security number. Yes. Yes. If someone calls them, they should not give their Social Security number. Yes. They should at least pause, at least see, OK, who is this calling me? OK. All right. Why are you calling me? I don't recall getting a letter. May I have your name and your phone number? Then they will provide it if it's legit, okay? And then if they wish, okay, then they can call those numbers that I mentioned, the 800-772-1213 number or the 866-613-2774 number if they're local here because Akron has a different phone number, Canton has a different, Worcester, New Philadelphia, other areas have different phone numbers but they can use those numbers to verify who they're speaking to. And then they say, okay, all right, I'll finish the conversation with you. Uh, so again. But don't well, give their social security number at that point. Yes, they don't have to give that social security number at that point. Not um, that they have verified that yes, this person who called in this number that they gave me is a valid number for social security. Yes, then they can disclose their social security number um, uh, at that time. So we're okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, this is really a minefield that people are trying to navigate safely. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate you coming and spending this time with us and filling us in on all these details. So Robert, it's been great having you with us again. I wish we had more time. Maybe oh, we'll um, have to bring you back and have you give us some further updates. But yes, now yeah. it's so great to have you with us. Thank you so much. And to all of you who have been watching, have a wonderful day. And thank you so much for tuning in to RSVP. Mm -hmm.